Hey everyone, my name is Greg Kosick. I'm the program coordinator here at Camp Jekyll. Hey everybody, I'm Corinne, the program spe specialist over at 4-H Tidelands Nature Center. And we are going to be showing you some different fishing methods today. And we're going to be heading down to the beach to do that. One method we're going to use is seining. We're also going to be using a hook and line. And we're also going to be throwing a cast net. Before we head down to the beach, Greg's going to tell us a little bit about our seining net. Yeah, so come on over here. We're going to open up this net and we're going to show you what this looks like all opened up. So again, this is called a seine net. And the purpose of this net is to try and bring it through the water to catch as much as you can through the entire water column. Now this is typically used right on the beach. So as you can see at the top, we have some little white floaties. That helps keep the top of the net at the top of the water. And on the bottom, we have some little weights. That'll help keep the bottom of the net right along the bottom to help move any of those bottom critters up into the net. So let's head on down to the water. Let's see what we can catch. All right, so here we are on the southern tip of Jekyll Island. Unfortunately, it was a pretty windy day, so you're not going to be able to hear us in the actual video, but we still wanted to walk you through what's going on. So as you can see, Corinne and I are pulling that same net through the water. We're going against the current. And as we scoop through, we're going to bring it up to the beach and lay it down flat. Now, one of the reasons we want to do this is to try and find all the animals that we may have caught and either uh, collect them and put them in our collection bin or put them back into the ocean. We want to make sure that these animals will survive. So let's see what we got here. Take a closer look. So it looks like we may have caught in a few anchovies, which is pretty cool. We'll talk about those a little bit more. And then, oh, we'll also got a nice big Georgia shrimp. Very nice. So let's do one more pull here. Let's do it for a little bit longer, a bit uh, deeper of a pull, see if we can catch any new stuff. So Corinne and I, we're walking against the current. So we're actually using the strength of the current as we're walking backwards to try and encourage anything we do catch to stay in that net. So let's see what we caught. All right, let's take a look at what we caught. Here, it looks like we have a young blue crab. These blue crabs have a pretty strong pinch, so we've got to be careful about how we hold them. Large blue crabs are actually a really popular food for people. This one is much too small to keep. But we can tell from looking at this crab, at the bottom of the crab, that it's actually a female. This pouch here on the bottom is called its apron. That's actually where she would hold any eggs. Let's see, we also caught a comb jelly, or what we call sea snot. These are not true jellyfish, so they actually cannot sting you. And over here, oh, we have something called sea lice, or an isopod. This is actually a parasite on different fish. And let's take a look at the rest of the net. Over here we have some more anchovies. These anchovies are almost clear fish that are planktivores, so they'll open their mouths really wide and try to catch as many plankton as they can. Looks like Greg found a squid. This is a pretty small squid, but they can actually change colors. Those dark spots are called chromatophores, and they can use those to alter their color just a little bit. Let us know in the comments if you know what that squid can produce to try to deter predators from catching it. Let's see. Over here we have a pipefish. These pipefish are really cool. This one is super tiny. They have just hatched. These pipefish are actually related to seahorses. They can actually grow to be six to eight inches long and they'll eat really tiny crustaceans like crabs or shrimp. Let's see. Oh, this is a really cool fish. This is called a plain head filefish. These would often be hiding around sargassum or with other algae. Really cool. Let's take a look at some other fishing methods. All right, so here we have Mr. Tuning, our center director. He's gonna demonstrate how to cast a rod and reel. So he's gonna put it over his shoulder and cast that piece of bait as far out into the water as he can. So that's gonna try and encourage any of those deeper water animals to come up a little shallower to bite that bait. So this is the hardest part. We're gonna set it and wait. Patience is a huge part of fishing. So we're gonna let that sit there, but let's take a look at some other methods of fishing that are used. 
So here we're going to give our cast net a try, or throw net. I'm actually holding part of the weights from the bottom of the cast net in my mouth. The trick is that when we throw the net, we want it to open up almost like an umbrella. So you've got to hold the weights in a couple of different spots. And then the weights sink down to the bottom, the ocean floor. And as we pull it up, everything is trapped inside the net, so we can take a look at what we caught. Let's see. Oh, and it looks like we did catch a shrimp. And we've got something on the line too. Let's check it out. All right, so this is a great sign if you see it on your pole. That means something's on the line. We, we have something hooked on there, but we want to try and pull it in. So Richard's going to reel it in for us here. Let's see what we got. And depending on how far you were able to cast, it can sometimes take a little bit of time. But oh, it looks like this guy was pretty close. Nice. Let's take a closer look and see what we've got. So this is a nice little fish. This is called a whiting, a very common fish down here on the coast of Georgia. They got some nice color and their fins are all opened up. So that's a healthy looking guy, but we want to make sure that they stay healthy. And so we're actually going to release all of our animals here. So the fish is first. We're going to try and make sure that he doesn't stay out of the water for too long. So we're going to bring him to a little bit of the deeper water and we're just going to make sure that he's good to go. Let him swim out of our hands. There we go. Off he went. We're also going to make sure all our other critters that we caught throughout the video are released as well. So we want to make sure that we empty that bucket out into the deeper water, not just right on shore. We want to make sure that they have plenty of water to swim in. All right, let's get cleaned up and we'll meet you back on center. Thanks so much for joining us today. We caught a lot of cool stuff down there on the beach. Be sure to tune in uh, tomorrow for the Forks and Farm Friday. And also hope to see you next week uh, with uh, Camp Jekyll and Tideland next Thursday. Take care, y'all.